Yes, uh, this evening I'd like to present my business idea. I call it a business race. You see, we all are on a journey or a race. The race of grace, I call it. Our journey began when we made our entry into planet Earth. It's a race. And we all need to find what we were born for. Because we all have a purpose, a reason for being. And so what's my business idea? I want you to know that career, your career is different from your calling. And your true business should in fact be your calling. Why you were created. All other businesses could be could be. No, all other businesses are secondary. They're like uh, Paul making tent while being called to preach the gospel. And so what is my business? What is my vision? What is my assignment? What is my reason for being? What is my purpose? What is my dream? When a woman is pregnant for a long time, she is eager to give birth and hold the bone in her hands and rejoice with her friends. Secondly, she will want to give birth and become slim again, regain her ship, so to speak. And so, there is that double craving or longing. And that's my story. I have been pregnant for a long time. Yes. For a long time since I knew my vision or had an inkling to my vision. It's taken a long time in coming. But I have trusted in the Lord to make His word good. He called me good success while I was failing and failing and failing. But I held on to God's word and will continue to hold on to His word until the success is made manifest. Until the one who failed is turned into a good success. So what's the vision all about? Good question. My mission statement pillars are as follows. A musical bread basket. You might wonder what does that mean? <laughs> musical bread basket, yes. God has gifted me with the ability to write songs, sing them, record them, perform them, and package them. Many of them are online. He's even given me the ability to make videos out of them. The ability to match the songs with sermons. That is a unique ability. And it is my unique selling point. I'll come to that at a later stage. 
And so that's the, what the musical bread basket is all about. People will come and eat of it and be revived, inspired, launched, challenged, charged. And they will come again and again and again. It's an inspirational river of life. God has given, gifted me with the ability to write poems too. Inspirational poems. And these will also be recorded. Some have been recorded. I've also put some of them on videos which are on YouTube. So it's an inspirational river of life because it will give life to those who are dead, those whose dreams are dead, those whose dreams are undercover, those whose dreams are shattered. It will help them come back to life. It is an educational Philip or tonic. By his grace and also an ed educationist. Qualified teacher of maths and English basic skills. And I have lots of skills which I intend to impart to young people skills that will enable them to secure employment or be their own boss and uh, I will also be organizing being your own boss seminars starting your business seminars it will be an impartation but bastion what does that mean that relates to the skills that I will be imparting to young people and older people who want to acquire new skills and maybe branch off into something new in their lives, even when they are old. I will be partnering with various charities to alleviate poverty in various parts of the world. Finally, I will be disseminating the songs that God has given me, I'll be packaging them, taking them places, because I believe I am blessed to be a blessing. And the songs God has given me are not meant to gather dust, and so I will actively disseminate the songs to churches, to charities to individuals, organizations that have open arms to receive me. That in a nutshell is what the vision is all about. This purpose, dream, business will take me to churches with the empowerment of the saints and sinners. It will take me to companies where I would encourage creativity, efficiency, productivity, innovation, resourcefulness of workers, customer service, improvement, corporate governance will be visited with a view to inputting social consciousness and responsibility, identifying and solving problems wherever I go, using my experience over the years, I will also go to schools, secondary schools, primary schools, People referral units, schools with uh, SCN, 
students, students with special needs, special educational needs, schools with children with educational and behavioral difficulties. I've been to such places, many, many, many of them over the years. And so, by God's grace, my experience has been many in such establishments, even including those in prison, young offenders, been the young offender units. Yes, I will be imparting discipline, excellence, citizenship, social responsibility, integrity and respect in those, these places. Values, social values will be encouraged. I will also be holding concerts in various places as I am invited. So these concerts will be free to raise funds for charities. Furthermore, part of my business will be writing books e-books, hardbacks, paperbacks, audiobooks and some of the titles I have are as follows Born Awaiting the Barren, these are some of them, I've already started them Prize, No Prize, No, no, no Prize, No Prize Eagle Odyssey and the Christian Journey Treasures in Darkness Tre sorry, Treasures in Jars of Clay, A Book of Books, Essence of His Presence, Dare to Dream, Dream to Destiny, Going for go God's Best Sins, Sing a New Song, Glamour Added to Glory, Show Me Your Glory, Foundation for Songwriting, Faith Fence Foundation, Com Comforter, Prevailing Prayer, Prevailing Over Pressure, Discipline delivers dividends, living a lasting legacy, living a life of love, divine direction delivers, treasures of darkness, and finding financial freedom. And there are more to come. There are just a few titles that I have. Like I said, some of them I have already started. And some are at the at an advanced stage. Yeah, I will also be having a music healing therapy center where people will be, will come, listen to the, some songs which are powerful, penetrating, inspiring, with healing qualities, anointed, from the throne of grace and based on the prophecy I received a long time ago and the word basis for that prophecy was first Samuel chapter 16 verse 23 where it tells us that the Spirit of the Lord came and dislodged the evil spirit that was t troubling Saul. As David played, Saul became refreshed and well as healing. He was the distressed, distressing spirit departed as deliverance. Healing, refreshment and deliverance came from David's music that is also my portion I believe as I play people will come who come will be refreshed they will be healed and they will be delivered 
Of course, I will also emphasize the need for salvation because salvation is the greatest miracle that can happen to any man. And so what I do in my healing therapy center will involve three S's, the scriptures, the sermons, First of all, salvation, the scriptures, and the summons will be used as tools for the healing. <laughs> Furthermore, I will have unique gift sets such as poem frame poem poems, downloadable poetry and sermon. They are unique in the sense that I have sermons titled such that I also have related songs already composed that match the sermons. And for some of them I also have a poet poem associated with our sermon. And so when you combine two or three products like that, that are related, you have a unique gift. I will also have a song select service where you can choose the song you want, choose the poem you want, choose the sermon you want, and it will package for you. So you determine your gift, and your gift can be unique. Yeah. Unless you tell someone who comes and combines the gifts like that, it'll be unique to you. I will also believe in God to be able to prepare an app that will do it for you. When you come to my site, you'll be able to direct the app to choose what you want, you just need to key in some keywords and the app will, app will choose songs relating to that theme, poems relating to that theme, sermons relating to that theme, and then you can choose which one you want. Yeah, by the grace of God, that will happen. And so I will have a strong online presence by the grace of God. Yeah, I'll be going to companies to motivate the staff and management. The same thing I'll be doing in schools. So I'll not just be dealing with students, I'll also be dealing with staff and management, inspiring them to achieve, to excel. I will also be going to various refugee camps to help out and to partner with them, as I indicated earlier on. Yeah, it's part of my core vision. What next? Yes, in a nutshell, this is what I'm doing in pictures, inspiring churches, charities, schools, colleges, universities, inspiring that is the students and the staff, imparting skills, various skills. partnering with others to make a difference in various places where poverty is rife. Why is it likely to succeed? Very good question. It's an important consideration when you launch out of the business. Ask yourself, why is it likely to succeed? 
These are tough questions you must be able to answer before you launch into the deep. They should be part of your preparation. Without preparation, you are planning to fail. So ask yourself, why is it likely to succeed? And the answers I have are as follows. Vision. I have a vision. You must have a vision before you can talk of the success of that vision. You must write down your vision, which I've written down. The Word of God tells us in Habakkuk 2, 2, write the vision down, make it plain, so that those who run with it will have something tangible that they hold it on to. Write down the vision. Make it plain. If you're in an organization, you need to be casting your vision every year. Tell the staff, this is where we're going this year. So that everyone knows the vision for the year. Preparation. You've got to prepare in all you do. Poor preparation precedes poor performance. Proper preparation precedes proficient performance. Action. You cannot just be pontificating, theorizing. You must put action to what you propose. Action must follow your vision. Because faith without works is dead. A vision without an action is an illusion. You must be passionate about your vision. Without passion, your vision will die. But passion keeps you awake until late in the night. Passion jolts you from sleep. You wake up early. That's passion. You lose sleep. That's passion. Without passion, you cannot beget. You cannot expand. You cannot be productive. You cannot excel. You will be stalled. Provision in the vision. Yes, it is important to know that when you have found what you are called to do and you put your whole life into it and you begin to excel in that chosen line of dream of, or purpose or assignment, you can be sure that you will be provided for. Because provision is in the vision. Yes, it may not happen overnight. It may take a while. But in the long run, your provision will come. If you stick at it, stick to it, remain adamant, unflinching, faithful to your vision, provision will come. Self-confidence. Yes, it is important that you are confident about your vision. It is good to have God's confidence, knowing that God called you and holding on to Him, but you must also have self-confidence. And self-confidence comes from knowledge. You to know what you're doing. Properly, you need to practice that increases your confidence. You need to pray that increases your confidence. You need to know who called you. You need to be assured that He has put in you what you need to fulfill your vision. That increases your self confidence. You need to put your mistakes behind you. 
regardless of what happened in times past, you need not be a victim to the past. And so have hope for tomorrow. Avoid negative self-image. Know that God is for you, is in you, is with you. And if, it, if God is for you, no one can be against you. That's self-confidence. Know the scriptures that will boost your confidence. Know who you are in Christ that will boost your confidence. Know what you have in Christ that will increase your boldness, ability to stand before kings and not mere men. Yes, your gift will make room for you before kings and queens. Presence, yeah. It's important to cultivate God's presence at all times in your vision. Why? Because He is the giver of the vision. And if you eliminate Him from that vision, you'll have nothing to hold. So cultivate God's presence. The Son, Paul said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection the fellowship of His suffering may be made conformable even unto death. That I may know Him. The more desire to know Him. And the more you know Him, the more you know how little you know of Him. You cannot not exhaust knowing God. Cultivate His presence. Like Moses who said, If your presence does not go with me, do not send me. Show me your glory. If I have found faith, grace in your sight, show me your glory. His presence makes a difference. His presence is the essence of your vision. Yes, cast your bread on the waters. What does that imply? It means when you go out and you help others, alleviate poverty and suffering in various parts of the world, when you embrace that as part of your vision, you can be sure that God will make room for you. God will help you. Because you're not inward looking. You're looking out the window of the world. And you're seeing a bigger picture. Bigger than yourself. And that's the intention of God that you see a picture bigger than yourself. Join organizations bigger than yourself. Why is it likely to succeed? Still addressing that question? Because I am assured of a supernatural assistance. God will make a way. He who gave his word in Joshua 1 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it. And then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. He who gave me that word a long time ago, over 30 years, will fulfill it. Even though I have failed and failed over the years, yet I believe God, His will will come true. Abraham did not have a son, but God called him. He changed his name from Abraham to Abraham, father of many nations. But he had nothing nothing to show for it. God was calling him father of many nations, father of many nations, father of many nations. People around him are calling him father of many nations. Some of them may have laughed. <laughs> father of many nations. Well, he has no child. Yes, Abraham had to endure what seemed the humiliation for a long time. In the fullness of time, Yes, the promise came true. Genesis 21, At the set time God visited Sarah, and Sarah became 
pregnant and she bore a child called Isaac. Laughter. God brought their laughter even in their old age when they were past childbearing. That's what God can do so that it is undeniable that it is the hand of God. That God remains the same. Yeah. And so, why is it likely to succeed? Because oaks of righteousness shall stand in the fierce wind, through his great faithfulness abounding grace they will find. They will grow tall and strong like cedars of Lebanon. At night they'll have a song to cheer those that mourn. His spirit their comfort is love, so permanent fiery that's come to naught. They are the trees of the Lord, his treasure's possession. They are watered by the Lord in famine or recession. They will never perish. But rather they will flourish, bearing abundant fruit, rooted in Him. Yes, even in the summer, they will not be destroyed by the scorching heat. In the frost of the winter, they will remain strong, tall, robust. Oaks of righteousness shall stand in the fierce wind, in the storm, when the earth starts caving in, when the storm comes storming in. Oaks of righteousness shall stand because they are the trees of the Lord, his treasured possession. Why is it likely to succeed? Because all things are possible to those who believe. Yes, I have prayed a word and I will see. The word of God is so sure, settled in heaven. It will accomplish that which pleases him. I believe and I will see in the name of Jesus. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he has a wherewithal to bring it to pass. The earth in all its fullness belongs to him. Silver and gold belongs to him. He's able to do exceeding abundantly far above what I'm able to think or dream of. That's the God I serve. Yes. He can do and undo. He can be trusted. Yeah. And at this point, I will sing a song. All things. No. Book of the law. You shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate in it day and night. You may observe to do all that's written in it, then you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. Yeah. Book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You meditate in it day and night. Love that to do all that's written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. This book of the law shall not depart. Shall not depart. Out of your mouth. Have I not commanded you? Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God. I'll be with you always till the end of the age. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Heaven and earth will pass away, and my word will not pass away. Have I spoken? And will I not do? Have I promised? And will I not make good? I will be with you always till the end of the age. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of God mockers. Praise the light of the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. 
I will be with you always till the end of the age. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Yeah. Son, still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'll be with you always. I will never forsake you. For I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. And shall a mother forsake her sucking child? No, even if she does, I will not forget you. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Whoever is born of God overcome this world. And this is the victory that overcome this world, even your faith. I will be with you always till the end of the age. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Stand still and see the salvation of your God. Book of the law shall not depart. You made it in it day and night. May I observe to do all that's written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Yes, the word is nigh thee, it is the word of faith. Speak it and it shall be. Yeah, confess whatsoever is true, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is honest. Think on these things. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Yeah, the word that I have spoken shall not return to me empty. It will accomplish every shall please prosper and let them wear unto it is sent. Yeah, the grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but the word of God abides forever. I will be with you always till the end of the age, this book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Bless the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Stand still and see the salvation of, the, of your God. Every place the source of your feet shall tread, I have given to you. Ask of me, and I'll give you the nations for your heritance, the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. This book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of your mouth. Yeah, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate in it day and night, and you may observe to do all that is written in it, and you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. That's your inheritance. Even when you are failing, believe God until the table is turned because God's word abides forever. It will not return to him empty. It will accomplish that which he pleases, prosper the thing whereunto it is sent. Failure is not final. That you fail does not make you a failure. God has called you good success and that is what you will be. Eventually, it will be made manifest because God where it is powerful, it is active, it is dynamic, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate in it day and night, and you may observe to do all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. All things are possible to those who believe. I have prayed the word and I will see. I will receive. The word of God that has gone forth out of his mouth will not return to him empty. It will accomplish that which pleases him. Accomplish that which he has purpose. Yes. If God, God says, says yes, who, me, who can say no? Can say no one. Mm -hmm. Accomplish that when is the same I believe, I believe, and I will see, I 
Stand on your review wheel. Your word is settled in heaven. Your word is spirit and life. Your word is medicine to my body. Your word is powerful. It is dynamic. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God abides forever.